It's burning hot outside. The temperature's well over 100 degrees, and the air conditioning on our up-armored Humvee barely does a thing unless you press yourself right up against the vent. I'm really tempted to let down the window, but even when the wind blows out here in the desert, it just feels like a blow dryer to your face. Also, we're stopped, and it's hardly safe to let your bullet-resistant windows down in this part of the country when your vehicle's at a dead standstill. I'm a fire team leader, and my team and I are providing escort security for a VIP in the Humvee in front of us. Directly in front of his Humvee is two others, and the lead Humvee stops because of a suspicious pile of trash on the road ahead. But now everyone's on edge when they travel these roads. The insurgency has been hiding IEDs and everything from children's toys to random piles of trash and triggering them as a NATO column moves by. We've stopped for about a minute now, and I'm getting really nervous. This is my first deployment and I've heard stories about what happens when your convoy sits still for too long. On the radio, I hear the VIP, some general, call out to the lead vehicle, just shoot the damn thing and drive past. That actually sounds like a good idea. It's moments later and the lead vehicle opens up with a 50 caliber machine gun in its turret. There's a dull thump sound, and past the three vehicles in front of me, I can see a cloud of dust rising up into the air. Yep, it was an IED after all. Suddenly, I'm more nervous than I was before, if that's even possible. We were supposed to have an MRAP with us to clear the way. That's a minor resistant ambush protected vehicle that we've been told can take an IED to the face and keep on trucking. They just got in theater though and as usual maintenance issues means they weren't ready to go when we needed them. The lead vehicle is waiting until visibility is restored before pressing forward again. No point driving straight through a thick dust cloud into whatever may have been waiting for our lead vehicle to take that IED and get knocked out. There's zero chance any insurgents in the area know of our VIP cargo but to them hitting one convoy is as good as any other. They just want to score casualties. Still nervous about sitting still, I tell our Mark 19 automatic grenade launcher gunner who is looking behind us and providing rear security to keep his head on a swivel. Then it happens. There's a dull flack 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 sound and three cracks appear on the driver's side bullet resistant front window. I can see dull sparks from rounds pinging off the armor of the Humvee in front of us. Without needing to be told, the M60 gunner in that Humvee immediately spins his turret and starts putting out fire into the field to our left where the fire is coming from. My mouth goes dry. This is it. And I very desperately want one of two things to happen. I want the convoy lead to order us to dismount because sitting in a Humvee is not a good place to be when the bad guys have RPGs. Even if you're driving an up-armored version like we are. I also want the convoy to just press forward, pedal to the metal, get the hell out of here. That's exactly what doctrine states in most situations. You push out of the ambush zone, but we don't move. Then we get a question over the radio. Are we receiving fire to the rear? Negative. After a moment, the convoy lead asks for our gunner to lay down a 100 meter by 100 meter barrage on the field we're taking sporadic fire from. I yell at my gunner, who seems eager to obey the order. A half second later, there's the dull thumping from the huge automatic grenade launcher, and in my stomach, I can feel the impact of the 40 millimeter grenades exploding. He puts out fire in a 100 by 100 meter square as instructed, because we can't see the shooters. And in my head, I remember practicing the same tactic when I too qualified on the Mark 19. I always pictured myself painting a giant box, the grenades being full of paint and making sure every single square inch of that box got filled in. The fire we were taking dies off long before our gunner finishes his job, then immediately turns his turret around to provide rear security again. We sit in silence for a few moments, and the order to go forward is given. I look down at my watch, and incredibly, only two and a half minutes have passed since we stopped for the suspected IED. My first combat felt like hours, and it was barely 150 seconds. Later we get word that a security sweep of the area found the remains of three bodies. When I hear the news, I realize that these guys weren't the real deal. Probably just some fired up kids hoping to take out some Americans and make a name for themselves. The real insurgency is a lot better at their jobs. It's now two days later, 1800 hours. We just got out of a briefing for tonight's op and are headed for chow. We've been tasked with providing security for some intelligence guys as they lead us to a house in a local village. Tonight's gonna be a snatching grab. The target is a bomb maker who's suspected of being pretty high up the chain, and likely the guy who either built the bomb the teenagers who got themselves KIA the other day tried to use, or planted it himself and left them behind to try and take out some Americans. The intel guy suspect that he's been sent there by his higher ups to try and bolster the local insurgency. This area has been relatively quiet for years, but we're getting intel from locals that the insurgent forces are moving back in. If we can take this guy alive, it'll be a huge intelligence victory. So we're told over and over again how important it is we practice strict fire discipline. Also, the house is located in the very center of the village and packed right in next to two other houses on each side. The walls in most of these houses are really thin, and even our M4s can punch through these walls and hit someone on the other side. Limiting civilian casualties is critical. Nobody wants to be responsible for killing a civvy. 
I'm scared to death, but I try not to show it for the sake of my team. The prospect of going into the middle of a village to try to snatch a high-ranking enemy VIP makes my stomach churn. We've trained extensively for urban combat, even went through FBI training in close quarters battle or CBQ, and I know it can be a nightmare. There's too many places to hide or get ambushed from. Civilians everywhere. In military parlance, it's a total shit show. Also, tonight we can't go in with heavy weapons. We're limited to just M249 saws on the Humvees, and even those are for emergencies only. The M249 is like the smaller cousin of the M60 or the M240 Bravos, and there's something about seeing the big 60s or 240s on a turret that makes me feel safer, or preferably a 50 cal in a Mark 19. Everyone's in high spirits though, only one other guy on our team has seen combat before, our sharpshooter. He doesn't really like to talk about it, but none of the snipers ever really do. Through a long range scope, you can see the faces of the people you shoot at, and that makes the war real personal for those guys. It's now 0100 hours, and we're rolling back down a road on route to our target. The great thing about this part of the country is that few of these places have electricity, and the clear desert skies let you see more stars than you've ever seen in your life. The starlight is good for us. It let's us drive our Humvees and one escorting Bradley without headlights. Everyone uses night vision instead. Our vehicles may be loud, but we want to give the enemy as little a heads up as possible. A half hour later, we're rolling into the village and everyone's on high alert. I remember asking during the briefing why we didn't just stop short of the target and hoof it. I feel safer approaching on foot without the vehicles making a bunch of noise and alerting the village the moment we enter. They want this to be a quick operation though, literally drive up to the guy's front door and yank him out before anyone has a chance to react. On paper, it seemed like a good idea. In reality, I have my doubts and those doubts grow as I start to see curtains being pulled back in windows and faces looking down at us in surprise. We're at the target block of houses within a minute of arriving though and I find myself hopeful that we're fast enough to take off guard anyone who might be protecting the enemy VIP. I tell our driver to pull to the back of the houses. Us and a second team are tasked with securing the rear of the buildings and making sure nobody makes a run for it or tries to ambush us from this location. We're out of the Humvee in seconds, taking up positions overlooking the rear and corners of the five block row of houses. I look back and see my gunner in the turret behind the 249, and something in my gut tells me to get him off that turret. This is supposed to be a fast op, in and out, so it makes sense for him to stay in the turret, but I can't explain. Something tells me to get him and that gun down, so I do. He ends up taking position by one of the tires of the Humvee, proned out and gun facing down the road we're on. I can hear the entry team bash the front door, and on cue, two of our guys back here pop flashbacks inside the two windows on the rear of the small target house. Up front, they do the same thing, and almost simultaneously, there's the roar of four or five bangers going off at once. We have no idea where in the one-story house this guy is at, but we're not taking any chances. If he was awake and waiting for a fight, I guarantee he's no longer in a condition to do so. Everybody gets tense, waiting for the sound of gunfire, but there's nothing. Just the screaming of some civilians. A man and his wife and kids run out of one of the next door houses and take off down the street, fleeing in terror. We let him go. Then there's a call over the radio. We hit the wrong house. The intel guy screwed up. Bad. The only people inside are an old woman and her two older daughters. The old woman's in bad shape from the bangers and she needs medical treatment ASAP. I hear the call to abort. We lost the element of surprise and the last thing our 20 man crew wants to do is get caught with our pants down as they currently are in the middle of this village. Everyone starts rushing for the Humvees. Up front, they're taking the old woman and her daughters into the Bradley so they can rush them back to base for medical attention. Briefly, I think about my own grandmother. What if it had been her in that house? We made this mess. Now we gotta clean it up and make it right. Suddenly, there's light, then heat. Finally, a roar. I'm staring up at the sky and I can barely hear anything. Slowly, my hearing comes back. Then I look over at my Humvee, just 40 feet away and it's in flames. Took an RPG and it looks like the gas tank got hit. There's burning diesel everywhere. Immediately, I look for my gunner and I see him miraculously laying down fire towards a house a block over. The thick, heavy-duty tire and axle somehow protected him from the blast. War is so random sometimes. My head's all fuzzy as I look at my gunner firing away, and I keep remembering, don't fire unless you need to, and keep off the 249s unless absolutely critical, there's civilians everywhere. I open my mouth to tell him to stop firing, but then I see the dust that's being kicked up all around me, little explosions of dust everywhere, and I realize we're being shot at a lot. My hearing finally comes back as I crawl for cover behind a short concrete wall. The air is full of sharp cracks, and it dawns on me that that's the sound of being on the wrong end of a bullet. I make contact with my team, checking for any casualties. Everybody's fine, but the other team with us has a guy down. My mind races as I take stock of the situation. We're being told to extract ASAP, but I radio back that 
that our Humvees out and we got one casualty. The fire's coming from a house directly up the street from us, and I realized that this was probably the house we were looking for all along. Just our luck to be caught right out there in the open in front of it too. There's fire coming from two of the front facing windows, and somewhere to the left of the house in another building as well. My guys are returning fire best they can, and the 249 is chewing up the front of the house, but having to stop for reloads every 30 seconds or so, he's got no assistant gunner with him this time to help him reload. We weren't supposed to need it. I can see the figures darting in and out of the house, the left and right, and I realize they figured out that we're just a small team, not even a full strength platoon's worth of soldiers, and three of them are intel guys I'm not sure have fired a rifle since basic. I remember my training, we studied the Russian invasion of Afghanistan a lot. Their biggest mistake was staying put when under fire, letting the Mujahideen maneuver on them and outflank them. They took huge casualties because of that. We don't stay put, I order my saw gunner to stick with the other fire team to protect the wounded, now they have two and I take my two other guys and make a break to our left. We duck behind another row of houses and start slowly sweeping forward. We may be under strength, but we've been trained to fight aggressively. A second fire team from the front of the house is mirroring our movement on a parallel street. One of their Humvees got knocked out as well, and we're down to two Humvees in the Bradley. Not enough room to move everyone out. We didn't bring spare vehicles because, again, we were supposed to be in and out. The US military has learned from its mistakes. Too often units have sat still, holding defensive positions waiting for extraction or a chance to make a break for it, racking up casualties the whole time. Not us. We got one way out of this mess and that's to jump straight into the teeth of it. We take four guys completely by surprise. They're practically jogging down the middle of the street, not even bothering to move tactically rifles up. Guess they expected us to hunker down to sit still. Their mistake. They'll pay for it. It's a lot like shooting targets at the firing range. A few quick squeezes on the trigger and it's over in a couple of seconds. The three of us opening up almost simultaneously. We're now just a few houses over from the new target house which is being hammered by one of the front team's 249s and incredibly still has people shooting back out of it. The other fire team maneuvering up also ran into their own bad guys, but they got pinned down in a firefight. Yes, their perps were smarter about how they moved toward an ongoing fight. We fixed the number of hostiles by now though, two still firing inside the house, and three engaging the fire team maneuvering up the street across from us. There's another estimated three down inside the house, two in front of it after trying to make a break out the front door, plus the four my team got. That's 14 hostiles total, nine now KIA, who were all either living in or next to the target house. Suddenly, I'm really happy we didn't hit the right house. It would have been a bloodbath for the entry teams. It's a small village though, and the good news is that with so many hostiles in one spot, it's unlikely there's reinforcements coming from anywhere else. This gives me an idea. It's insane, and I surprise myself when I realize I'm already transmitting it over the radio. I'm even more surprised when we get the go-ahead. We've been cleared to storm the house, take out the last two guys, hopefully seize the enemy VIP still alive, all with a three-man assault squad. It's insane, I keep telling myself as we move toward the rear of the house, guns up and eyes trained on the windows and doors around us, but especially the rear door of the house. It's been left wide open, probably from the haste the guys trying to maneuver on us were in. I'm afraid. Damn afraid. I'm about to literally jump into the shark's mouth and take guys with me, but I push it out of my mind. I realize that this is the first time I've been afraid since the fighting actually started. I've been running on pure adrenaline, brain falling back on training. I go back to that place and I try to think about what's coming next as just another training exercise, just another breaching exercise. Move in, shoot the stationary target dummies, don't shoot the civilian dummies, reset the course, do it all over again. At the back of the house, I peer into one of the rear windows. There's what looks like a messy bedroom that sleeps at least a dozen guys. Blankets all over the floor, but it's clear. The back door leads to what I'm assuming is a hallway. Slowly, the three of us maneuver on that door, stopping just to the right of it. This was my stupid idea, so it's my head that peers out and into the open door. Long hallway, and I can hear what sounds like two guys firing from one of the rooms at the end of the hallway. Looks like they didn't leave any rear security. Again, probably expected us to sit tight, defend our casualties, and wait for extract. This is a new ward though, we don't sit and wait for air support anymore. Hit us and we're going for the jugular. I call for the gunner still putting fire on the house to aim high. The machine gunner is now shifting his fire up, hitting the roof of the building so he doesn't inadvertently put rounds through the thin walls and into us. By keeping up the fire though, he's drawing the attention of the two guys still inside, making them think they're still taking direct fire. I take point. Again, it's my bad idea, might as well be the first in. Also, it's my team. The thought of one of the guys buying it and me going home safe because I was second or third in scares me more than this firefight. We stack on the side of the door, just like in training, ready 
ready to burst in almost simultaneously. The third man on the stack squeezes the shoulder of the second guy, who in turn squeezes my shoulder. That's the cue, and on getting that squeeze, I silently whip into the door, rifle up and ready. It's supposed to be a four-man stack, but we adapt. I push past the first door on the left, and the two men behind me whip into the room. I hold position just past the door, still focused dead ahead where the shooting is coming from, a room further down the hall on the right. A second later, the two come out of the door, whispering, all clear. We press forward once again. The hallway is tight, too tight for the guys behind me to safely fire if anything happens without running the risk of hitting me in the back, so I'm all the security we have as we move forward. I'm duck walking, my feet spread widely apart and chest forward to the enemy. That way, if I do take a round, it'll go straight into the thick arm armor plate covering my chest. It's an awkward technique to learn at first, but we've practiced it so long that it's easy as regular walking for me. I keep expecting someone to pop out ahead of us, but nobody does. The two firing away in the room ahead to our left are still completely unaware we're in the house. There's a body up ahead lying in the hallway. By now we're close enough to the front that I can see all the bullet holes in the walls where our rifle and machine gun fire tore straight through the thin walls of the home. This guy must have caught rounds that came through the closed front door when the fight started. I take a quick look at the body which is lying face up and then call for the man behind me to cover me as I take a knee real quick. His rifle goes up as I duck down, checking a photo in my pocket the intel guys provided us with. Yep, it's him, the bomb maker. Now, just another KIA. The entire mission is basically pointless now, just two loose ends left to tie up. The saw gunner out front has been strafing the far left side of the house and the roof to make it seem like he's still opening up on the bad guy shooting out the window. Now I call him over the radio. He pulls his fire up even higher, putting it clear over the roof of the building and into the sky. Me and my team are directly outside the bad guy's door now. I don't feel anything. Just another run through the CQB course back home. Nothing to it but swing in, fan out, take out your dummy targets and press on. I feel that squeeze in my shoulder, and operating purely from instinct, I swing into the doorway and press forward. In CQB, you slice up a room into individual fields of fire, and each man has his own slice. It's vital you clear your slice first, even if there's no bad guy there, because if you ignore it to open up on a bad guy in somebody else's slice, you could miss someone. And now that bad guy you didn't put down is going to put you down and your team down. I swing into the room and press forward just like in training. First man in, I'm responsible for the far left rear corner of the room, away from the front facing windows, away from the bad guys. The second and third man are in the room just split seconds after me. There's silence at first, then the roar of gunfire coming from my guys. My slice of the room is clear, so I turn to the known threats, but they're already down. They never saw us coming, never dreamed we would do anything but hunker down and try to defend ourselves. In combat, whoever has the initiative is typically the victor. We've been trained to be aggressive, to seize the initiative and deny it to the enemy, keep him off balance. Tonight, that training saved our lives. I think about this night later, and I find myself glad that my slice of the room had been clear. I'm glad it wasn't me that had to put down a hostile at point-blank range, close enough to see their face.